Okay, we're back. We're live. It's a given Wednesday morning. <clears throat> We've heard from uh, Trump Week, which was really terrific just now, you guys. Congratulations. That was a very nice show. I really enjoyed that. I learned from it. And now we're going to do the follow-up, Coronaville. Coronaville, what's next? And, you know, of course, it's about Trump, but it's also a look ahead, and it's a look at the disease. That's what we're going to talk about. That's what we always talk about. Before we begin that, though, and we have Winston, we have Stephanie, we have Cynthia. Before we begin that, we're going to talk about freedom of the press for a minute in these difficult COVID times. And Winston, you had a story that is absolutely worth telling. Would you tell your story about what? Alamo on a park. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, we're seeing this in the media that the freedom of the, of the press is uh, is at risk right now. Um, we're, we're seeing this in our state in general when you have these uh, basically government secrecy laws uh, when, where we can't get um, access to, to meetings. These are important meetings. They're, they're police commissions. They're heart money's being spent. They're whatever it is from the mundane to the important. Public has a right to accountability and transparency in our government. That is fundamental to our nation. The media is critical to all of this, as we know from the Talk about what country. happened in Alamoana Park. Well, you know, in Alamoana Park, there was uh, a lady down there, Chun James, and she was down there documenting what had happened to uh, the trees being cut down at Magic Island. And uh, right or wrong, whether you agree with her, her positions or not, she's filming from her camera and she is told that she has to leave the park because she's not doing one of the permitted activities she's in the park, which is cool. She says to the, to the police officer, I am with the... I have a show on Olelo. I am with the free media. I think as as with the word that she used, free media uh, show on Olelo and called Community Matters. I think is the name of her show. And I am just here to show what the city has done taking down these trees. Uh, and so, so she's trying to say, are they they don't look sick or or whatever her her points are or aren't. And the officer says it's not a permitted activity. She says so. We don't have freedom of the press to report on this thing. He says, no, this is not a First Amendment activity. You're not walking riding a bike, jogging, surfing, or bicycling. Those are the five permitted activities, he said. And she said, no, the freedom of the press is an essential activity, you know, under the, the, the governor's proclamation, but even it just is. I mean, we, are we suspending freedom of the press on something so mundane like this? So if something like this, where we're just one lady alone with a cell phone videotaping this gets a response of six police cars coming up, eventually, and cited uh, to, and, and she was going to be removed from the park. They said, you can film from outside the park and tell your story, but you can't take a picture from inside the park because it's not permitted. This is a basic issue uh, because what else, you wonder if that's being hidden, what are the other really important, other, well, that's important news, but it's, what about really important things like police commissions or uh, you know, what's going on with Hart or any other stories. Well, let's let's dwell on the, the, what happened first. Stephanie, what's your reaction? Well, I'm just running through my my schema here. I don't know the law on that, but I, I, I question whether she's per prohibited from taking pictures from inside the park. Okay, uh, Cynthia, what's your reaction? Um, I thought it was outrageous. I saw it on, the, on, on Hawaii News Now this week and was just shocked that they could do that. I didn't think they could. Well, from the beginning, media has been an essential activity. Exactly. And the cop didn't know, he didn't know. He was not informed. Uh, he was dead wrong. And he was dead wrong on a constitutional level and on the level of the order that was issued by the governor. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I blame the cop. I blame HPD. I blame the chief of police. And I blame the governor for not making it clear. It is fantastic that she was stopped. And it is even more fantastic that she was fined five thousand dollars for that. Uh, well, and this, and I think, this, and I think the press ought to make a huge, big stink about this. They cannot stop it. You know, the fact is that Trump is down on the press, and somehow this leaks out into the community. Even God-fearing people begin to question whether the press can can do its thing. And I find it fantastic that that has leaked out here, and it's leaked into the police department. That's what I find. What do you think? What's your opinion on this, Winston? Yeah, of course. It's We have a right as citizens to report on the activities of our government. This was not state secrets. This was 
a, a citizen, mm-hmm. regardless of whatever she's affiliated with, no, saying but she, she's, she, a me, she's a media person. She identifies media, herself as such. She's a self, self-proclaimed media person, has a show on Olelo. But even if she didn't have a show on Olelo, what if she was just wanted to film what this as a citizen? Um, and, and now, that's another question. Are, that may not be an essential activity. And, and it may not. Case, yeah. and, right, right. Media is. And so this was actually, this was uh, the, the, the police officer was referring to the proclamation from the mayor, not the governor. But of course, we live under the state, which has a law that says press is an essential activity. And so, yeah, it is, it's a failure to not have this be taught that the media is allowed to do this. I, 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 don't, if- I don't think it should end here. I think that, uh, you know, whoever is protecting the media, uh, the members of the media, counsel for the media, or to make an ongoing stink about this. So it never, ever happens again in our state. It's really way below the standard of our constitutional appreciation. But that's just, you know, in my humble opinion. We'll hear more about this. Let's go to the, the case in chief. The case in chief here in uh, Coronaville, what's next, is really the teeter-totter issue of whether we care about people dying or we care about resurrecting the economy at the expense of people dying. Uh, So uh, let's see, Stephanie, can you bring us current on how this week went in that that regard? Well, uh, it's a little cognitive dissonance for this week because of the contrast between the numbers of increasing cases in the United States that is available to see if they take out the New York data, which accounts for about one third of all of our data. But if you look at, a, at their, that curve um, without the US curve without the New York data, it's, it's increasing, it's uh, right as in rising a line. And then uh, to have so many states opened at the same time that this, uh, especially in the rural areas where they're doing some of this opening, um, the the uh, the cases are rising. So we're almost sowing in the the, the uh, seeds for that second wave. To, to yeah, Cynthia, what do you think? Where where are we on this? Well, you know, I have a quote from Bill Blasio, this uh, the the mayor of New York City, and he's talking about Trump, and he said he handed billions to airlines but leaves out America's cities and states that are the real um, drivers of the economy. And, and what he, so we're gonna need to, to cut our budgets. So that's police, fire, you know, nurses. Teachers. So these are the budgets that are gonna be cut. So if we have another surgence going forward, like we are told by all the scientists we are going to have as we go back, that you know, the the states are going to have to make budget cuts, and the people that are going to get cut the most are the people we need the most. Now, Winston, you know what about this cognitive dis- dissonance that Stephanie talks about? You know, there was a there was a program, a particularly interesting segment uh, by Rachel Maddow this week, where she did research on all the meatpacking plants in rural areas in the Midwest, uh, and she found hundreds and hundreds of cases that had sprung to life in these Midwestern meatpacking plants. The same authorities, you know, around those plants and those communities were telling people they had to go back to work. Uh, One governor, I can't remember the state, he said, if you don't go back to work and if you stay home, we're gonna cut off your employment benefits, your unemployment benefits. It was extraordinary that Trump's, um, his name should be erased, Trump's, um, you know, instruction on this is so confused that you can take it either way. And the gestalt of it is you force people to go back to work in a meatpacking plant where most of the people there have coronavirus. What kind of a thing is that? Anyway, I just add that as fuel to the fire. Uh, where are we on this? Um, is, is it rational what's happening? Uh, it, it, you know, it's not rational. You got people that want to go back to work that need a paycheck. This is where the government can step in and say, you are going to get a, uh, you know, a universal basic income for a while if you don't have one right now. So you can stay floated until we get this thing under control rather than saying, we're opening up the mall, come shop at Gucci, Prada, Chanel. I mean, who's going to go out, number one? But if they do, and I know people want to get out, they're going stir crazy, but do you want to go into an environment where half your coworkers are sick with a very deadly disease and you don't know if it's going to be you or that you're bringing it home to your kids or your parents? 
um, or or anybody else for that matter. And right now we have a handle on it. Lucky we live Hawaii to keep the borders closed. Mandatory testing for anyone. Do, do who wants we have to come a handle? I want to. I want to question that. Do we have a handle? These meat we, packing plants are going crazy with cases, and rural areas are catching what what New York seems to have um, flattened. Rural areas are catching. If you look at the curves side by side, the rural areas are going sky high. Do we have a handle on it? Come back in two weeks, and you're going to see, and th and three weeks, you're going to see mass cases from what we, can, what we can understand in those same very areas people you know they they in this case they're gonna do what they're gonna do but here in hawaii since we have so few cases i'd say we're lucky here don't allow anyone in who's not tested who's well, you know you know tested. you notice what the governor did to your point about shopping centers first thing he says is we're going to open up the shopping center i mean i say centers because alan Iwana is is all shopping centers rolled into one <clears throat> That's the first thing he says. It wasn't 24 hours where he said, well, we're going to hold up on that for a little bit. I think he must have watched the, uh, you know, the Rachel Maddow show. Um, but, you know, the reality, the reality is that going to the shopping center exposes you to any number of people, local or otherwise, who are the silent carriers. And then you go home and you hug your wife, whatever. Okay, before you know it, we have an, an exponential expansion. Uh, so this, this is a great concern in Hawaii, and, I, and I, I, I do not credit him for opening the shopping centers. I think that was not a good move, but I credit him with changing his mind on it. At least he knows how to change his mind. They don't know how to do that in Washington. Yeah. So, Stephanie, would you go to the shopping center? I, th I am mourning out the people already because this is going to be a national travesty again. I know Axios said um, Minnesota and Nebraska are the highest increasing states, which has to do with the meatpacking plants, I believe. But no, I, it's so misguided and it's so in, uh, inhumane. He's, he's, I, I, my heart goes out to all of the people that are facing death. I mean, if they're in the high risk groups or if they have underlying circumstances, symptoms, and, and they have no choice because they can't lose their, their job. So yeah, this is different. This is different than in say Michigan a week ago where they all come, come down with their AK-47s and um, know, the, the other accoutrements they came down with to demonstrate just how skinhead they are. Um, that's different because they wanted to do that. They'd made up their own mind completely erroneously and without any consideration for their fellow citizen. They came down and then busted into the state legislature and all that, just really looney tunes. This is different though. The meatpacking plan is different because these people need to work Mm. They, the job, the only job they can get in this town is working in the meatpacking plant. And the, and the government is not standing by. The government is forcing them, you know, in order to feed their family, that they have to go and work. And, and the, the government is allowing the owner of the meatpacking plant to do whatever or nothing to protect them. So these guys who work at the meatpacking plant, they're totally victims totally different than the skinheads. And yes. I mean, that just takes this whole thing to another step. Thank you, Yamach Shemo. Well, the desperation is frightening that they must feel. My heart just so goes out to them. And of course, the, the C the C room group with left floor, the corporate folks, they're making gajillion millions hand over fist. It's inexcusable that there's no there's no consideration, no humanity, even for a brief time, as Winston points out, even if, even if the company paid for them, give them, give them two weeks out of uh, corporate. Uh, well, you know, what's worse is that these rural areas in, in the Midwest like that, um, they have no hospitals. And if they get sick, if they get sick and they're dying, there's, there's really no medical infrastructure for them. It's, it's travesty on a huge scale. Wait, watch to see. But you know, my problem is Aristotelian. 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 My problem is, you know, you, so you promise that testing will be available. You promise that masks will be available. You issue this kind of uh, uh, vague order about social distancing. And then before you do any of that, in fact, at the same time, you withdraw all of that so that everybody's confused about whether to do it. Then you say, 
okay, you guys, you have to go back. You know, so my question to you, Cynthia, is what happened? What happened to the masks? You know, what, what happened to the testing? What happened to these people that are walking the streets now? By the way, it leaks out in Honolulu. I, I took a ride with my wife. We had to go somewhere on Friday after the last, um, you know, Coronaville show. And, and we got the traffic jams, a number of traffic jams here. So it leaks out from Washington. And here in Hawaii, even, people are not taking this seriously. But what my problem is the Aristotelian one. If you say you're going to try to solve the health problem, and here's the steps, and then you don't do that, and then you say, everybody back to work, let's reopen the economy. You have the, you have the, uh, the fallacy of the inverted middle. You remember that, Winston, right? Aristotelian logic, yeah. And that's what we have here, the fallacy of the, of the inverted middle. Does it make any yeah, sense? I, I actually, I wrote my, my uh, PhD thesis on uh, Aristotelian um, uh, thesis <laughs> logic. You know, all you kids out there, this is going to be on the final exam, I'm telling you now. So, Cynthia, what happened to, to testing? What happened to masks? What happened to social distancing? Do we no longer need any of those things? We need all of them. And I believe that's why he um, fired that one IG, uh, the inspector general that oversaw um, the stockpile, the federal stockpile, because she was saying we don't have enough of that stuff still don't have enough PPE, still don't have enough of the things that we need to treat this virus, especially if it makes its comeback again, you know? And, and then just with all of these, the, um, the Tyson plants and all these plants, they're not even having OSHA come back in for regular OSHA, you know, restrictions and things. They're, they're not even using that. So everything is gone. So we know for sure that all of these are, all the cases are going to skyrocket, for sure. Mm. Winston, I, I, I do want to give you the opportunity to, to speak a, a little about your, your PhD uh, dissertation. <laughs> I, I, I haven't, I, I, it hasn't been formally accepted, but like I'm working on it. Basically, you don't need a PhD, you don't need a master's, you don't need a bachelor's to realize that something's not adding up here. And if we've got a mass pandemic that is controllable by social distancing, by washing your hands, by wearing a mask in public, because we know basically how it's transmitted and we can get it down, we can get it down. Now, it may be, and I read this, uh, I don't know, Civil Beat or the advertiser or somewhere that says, in Hawaii, we can still shut this thing down. We can make this a safe location because we are so, the, the number of new cases is so small and we could triple test everyone before they get here and then after they arrive so that with three different tests so that they don't, if there's one that was faulty, okay. But that maybe on the mainland, they've given up on the idea of containment at all. So it may be that we don't know, but they've gone with this idea that they're going for herd immunity and that, and they're just gonna let the the, uh, the chips fall where they may. And but let me, let me just <laughs> take a moment to explain what herd immunity is about. It's uh, arguably 60% of the people in a given population have had the virus. And when you reach that, that level of infection, then the herd has immunity. Everyone has immunity and the virus stops uh, propagating. The problem is that if 60% of the people in the community have coronavirus, X percent will die. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of um, a strange analysis. Again, testing our Aristotelian logic. Why, why exactly would you condemn X percent of the people to die? I mean, isn't there a better way in science in the 21st century than condemning people to die? It may be that the cat is out of the bag at this point and they're just realizing it, but they can't say that. So maybe they're just letting it go. I mean, if the meatpacking places are 50% infected right now, you're near the 60%. And just as a disclaimer, I am, I'm not getting a PhD and I'm not injecting um, Lysol either. So, uh, you know, <laughs> trying to deal with reality here as best as I can. Well, I think, I think it's clear that right? it's doable, but you have to stick on the discipline. And then it becomes doable. Do, doable with the herd immunity you hold or the, with herd, you hold and de, you know defer the curve down and then you little by little you introduce some more 
you know, uh, steps in, in opening the economy. But that's really not what's happening. Uh, and Trump doesn't, he doesn't know the nuance here anyway. And, and he's not listening to anyone. Uh, and he's firing people who give him advice. And he's, you know, determining task forces to shut Fauci up uh, and everyone. So uh, you know, we're not getting uh, information or instructions on any consistent level. And to do this so that we don't have a resurgence, you have to have consistent instructions and you have to follow them. We, we are having neither. And so, you know, Stephanie, what do you think? I mean, all that we know, all that we've talked about, are we going to have a second wave? We're going to have a resurgence of this infection? Well, Dr. Fauci guarantees it. He, he absolutely has stated categorically that we're going to have it. But let me just bring up another myth that we're discussing here, and that is herd immunity. There's no guarantee there's any herd immunity. The bubonic plague didn't have, didn't convite, provide, confer herd immunity. Everybody was dead after it finished. So why, uh, and you don't hear anybody talking about you, herd You heard it here on Think Tech. If you're dead, you don't have any risk of getting coronavirus. Is that, am I right about that? No risk at all. That's true. So we could say that the 100% wipeout means, you know, there's... Well, but I think, you, I think your point is very telling because there was a report a few days ago about somebody who had had coronavirus and then got it again. There's what? That. Yeah. So, so it, it is. There's no assurance whatsoever that if you have it, you're you're exempt from getting getting it again. I think so, it is body studies that are trying to take a look at this, but I think that they are not talking about it because everybody is thinking about herd immunity, whereas we have no basis upon which to believe. Yeah, thank you for that. So, Stephanie, uh, I mean uh, Cynthia, what, what does it look like if we get a second wave, a resurgence? Um, what is it going to be? Because, you know, it's like we've been there, done that. We've had, we've had the cold shock of the first wave. What is the second wave going to look like? Certainly it's not the same. It must be different, but how? I think it's going to be worse because it's going to be more widespread. If you look at history, the Spanish flu, the second wave was much worse than the first wave. Um, both the head of the CDC and um, Dr. Fauci have both said that the second wave will be worse. So I think we can listen to the scientists. But well, what does worse mean? There's going to be more. The number of cases is going to be higher. The number of deaths is going to be higher because right now we're starting with an already taxed medical system. So if we have another wave now and our health system is already overtaxed, then it's going to be impossible to yeah, try. But the whole thing about flattening the curve was to give the health system a rest. Exactly. So, so, so they didn't collapse, you know. So, okay. And Winston, there's another thing too, is if we have another, let's assume we open the economy. Trump would like to open it wide, full throttle right now today. But let's assume the, 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 the de facto is somewhere in the middle. Some states, yes, some states, no. Uh, some states, a little, some states, a lot. But, but how would a second wave or multiple waves going forward, how would they affect the economy? We know what happened in the first wave. It stopped the economy cold, you know, like completely dead cold. What happens? in the second wave about the economy it's hard it's hard to say i mean just imagining that that's why when i'm looking at i think i really think i'm very become hawaii centric because we have control over it you know queen's hospital dismantled their covid tent out in front of the emergency room uh today or yesterday because we, we got a handle on it here we need is, to is it a permanent condition it. Are you, are you making no, well, some sort of it, assumption that in a second wave we would continue to have a handle on it? I think that here in Hawaii, if we had proper testing for every person coming in the state after we've extinguished it, then we can have a complete handle on it here in Hawaii. That triple testing, yeah, we can do it here in the mainland. That's a pretty big assumption that we could test everyone coming into the state. If you well, wanted you to get what? a test right now today, you, you would have a big time getting it because you're not demonstrating any any symptoms. 
And uh, That's if true. any of us yeah. wanted to get that test, we would have a, a hard road to hoe to get it. So uh, I, I'm, not, I'm unconvinced that we could nail everybody coming into the state with a test. I'm also well, unconvinced that we could turn them back. I'm unconvinced that we could make them sit in a room for two, two weeks um, and that we have the police force. Remember the police force? We talked about that earlier. And that we have the police force to force them to stay in the room for two weeks, right? Well, so uh, that's an assumption know, that we have to question, okay? I see that, Jay, but, uh, you know, I mean, the, the huge majority of our police officers, and even the one in that case, I think, if they're not given instructions on what's what they're supposed to do, th that's what happens. So, but the, the, the huge majority of them are, are helping us to live by the law, and so they, they deserve our respect, and, and, uh, and yet, you know, they also need to know that it's a free speech zone, but I think that they're well within their rights to say, we have a pandemic situation. If you are coming in the state, you will be quarantined. You will be tested before you get here. You will be tested after you get here. And you must comply with the laws of our state. And that's it. And you don't get a choice. Uh, if you want to come to Hawaii, that's it. You can't prevent people perhaps from coming here at all. But I think we could very easily shut this down here. My main concern, though, is in the mainland. It reminds me of the movie Brazil. Do you remember that where... Uh, Catherine uh, Hellman, I think she's sitting there having coffee and there's bombs going off all around and it's just a natural thing because there's so many, it's just what the situation is, but they continue drinking tea and having a uh, cake. And I wonder if it's going to be something like that, that they just say, oh, well, you know, it just happened. And, you know, an entire nursing home got wiped out here and, you know, uh, everybody died, but it's okay. We're just, we're going to go to, to you know, Gucci and buy our watches. I, I don't know. That's what I'm imagining. <laughs> well, let me take a page out of Tim Apicella's book and ask you guys, you know, and this is an impossible question. I apologize in advance. So what can we expect? What next in the next week or two uh, here on Coronaville? What, what is going to happen? Uh, Stephanie, go first. I like Winston's uh, viewpoints now, because I think we, we are coming down. We're not the fastest one on Axios. Uh, who's coming down? Um, Arkansas uh, and Arizona are way down, and I uh, might had to do might had something to do with him going out there. But anyway, and but Hawaii is still a little hot, still decreasing. But we have such small numbers to begin with. So I'm thinking that. We're going to continue to decrease, and and that traffic's picking up. I really think that was such a good example, Jay. Yeah, I was amazed. There are people uh, on the roads again. We're getting back, so people are believing in this. I think so. We are having a reaction, much like the mainland, but ours is based on at least data trends, and theirs isn't. Okay. So hopefully what we're seeing is based on the population doing data trends to and listening to those on the TV. But Ige or the, the mayor, people are going to have to come out and give some more direction if this starts, uh, you know, to pick up in cases. I mean, we're yeah, still they, we never got down to no cases. We're on one case a day, but they're usually oldsters or people that went to the hospital. A man got it in the hospital, you know. Okay, well now, uh, now you, Cynthia, what, what do you see for the next week or so? Well, I think I, I kind of agree with Winston and Stephanie that it's different for us here in Hawaii because we are isolated and able to self-isolate in ways that people on the mainland are not able to. So I think it's going to be different in different places. We've got those meatpacking plants that are just going crazy still there's no end in sight to those guys and they're going to start to you know spread out into the community we're just going to start to see numbers skyrocket is what i think we're going to see okay winston you know winston um we already know how you feel and uh you know vis-a-vis -vis hawaii we have uh, you know two two of your co your co-hosts here agree with you uh so i i wouldn't argue that and i wouldn't repeat it but what do you think about the country in the next week or two? What do you think about the world? Take a minute and oh, tell us. You know what? It's, it's hard to say. Every, every week brings such new revelations. The shocking things are these folks, you know, going into stores and wiping their noses on people that when they tell them they have to wear a mask. I mean, what, what happened to a weak nation of sociopaths and psychopaths? But, but that said, there's so many other positive things of people springing up and helping all across the board. We see it. I get, it comes into my emails every day. 
people are stepping up. They're doing the right thing. In Hawaii, we're wearing our masks. If you're not, you're a pariah or a lunatic. And and you you will wear, you do you have to wear your mask. Everybody is. So uh, it's a great week to become a vegetarian. If you don't know how, Google it. How do I become a vegetarian and what's the benefit behind it? You know, it's a, it's a good week to do that because uh, you're going to save the planet and save yourself and save some poor meat packer who can now go into work in, uh, you know, biotech or something. But uh, it, hopefully people will gain uh, some sense about how they comport themselves nationally, locally. Certainly we're already doing it, but nationally, maybe they even if they have more freedom to go out and do something, they will still realize, hey, this is dangerous. Let's take precautions. Let's do all we can to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and our society in general. And I think people are stepping up. I, the outliers are hopefully going to remain that way. And, um, you know, let's, let's remain optimistic as best as we can and keep our borders closed in Hawaii as best as we can until we figure out a best way to keep, uh, to keep the virus out and keep our people safe. Okay, Winston, um, you know, uh, you are an optimistic person. I think we have achieved that profile for you here. And I am going to, I'm going to remind you of your optimism next week. <laughs> Maybe the others, the others on the show will help me do that. Okay, that's uh, Winston Welch, uh, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Sinclair. Thank you so much. We greatly appreciate your contribution to this critically important discussion. Aloha. Thank you.